As global cases of COVID-19 rage the past the four million, countries are fighting to save lives from the novel coronavirus and to save livelihoods from the disruptions of economic activities. Alarms have been sounded for developing country and developed economies alike. Unemployment, economic recession, food security are all among the most urgent challenges. How serious is the situation? What are governments and international institutions doing to address them? For that discussion, we talked to Dr. Shamshad Akhtar, former Under Secretary General of the United Nations, and Paolo Brozata, member of the board with the European House and Brosetti. Take a listen to what they had to say. And now we have Paolo Brozata, who is a member of the board with the European House and Brosetti, and also uh, Dr. Shamshad Akhtar, who is a former Under Secretary General of the United Nations. Welcome to both of you. Could you help us to understand where you are and tell me about the balance you are trying to keep between economic life, going to partial normalcy, vis-a-vis -vis the protection of the citizens against the pandemic? We are still uh, trying to keep everybody safe. We are slowly coming uh, out of a lockdown. Uh, we have 80% uh, of the people back to work. Uh, tourism, uh, bar and restaurants are not yet working. Uh, so this is a, a major problem, uh, not only economic but also social. So I think that uh, uh, we are mm, constrained, we are forced to take, to take care of the health of the people mm -hmm. and to accept uh, an e economic damage. Dr. Akta, what's going on right now for the general economy where you are? Is there a way to turn back time, uh, or rather to turn back the tide, shall we say? The provincial government here has decided that it will extend the lockdown. It has relaxed a bit by identifying certain areas or industries mm -hmm. that can operate. But by and large, uh, still, it's very restricted. There are timings when you can go out and do the shopping or move around. There are people who do go to work, but uh, work um, uh, companies are only running at 50 or 25 percent staff. Everybody is allowed to take off and work online. Yeah. What about for you in Italy? I mean, how are you going to deal with this uh, devastation for the economy after all of this? People will start to work again, but the damage has been done. Many companies will probably go bankrupt. Uh, the, uh, the financial help of the government is uh, arriving late because it's not difficult to channel so much money to all the companies. So my, my feeling is that the most important problem will be six months from now, not immediately after the uh, coming out of the lockdown. In Pakistan, uh, I understand Pakistan's economy was also challenged before the pandemic and now probably even more. Uh, for a developing country, what is it like to take it? A number of steps have been taken. Refinancing facilities are being provided for SMEs, for mm -hmm. all the affected industries, so that we could keep momentum going but the key thing is we can we haven't had a full restart of the productive activities one thing is which is very distinct about this developing country and for that matter all of South Asia uh, that the agriculture sector has uh, survived we do have a decent agriculture sector we are in the midst of the swing season and we are all keeping our fingers crossed that we are able uh, to um, yeah. have proper sowing and production so that the food supplies are not disrupted. Right. So what do you do? Uh, where do you think is the uh, growth point or the growth engine, at least uh, at this moment? In the near future, the growth engine from our point of view, from the European point of view, is Asia. Asia is a still a fastest growing market. You have still a lot of energies. Uh, you have, uh, in some cases like uh, China and other countries, uh, you have a modern infrastructure uh, that can be used uh, in, the, in the West, in the United States and in Europe. I think the situation is, uh, is, is different. 
So uh, the, the accent should be, in my opinion, on Asia and uh, Europe and the West should uh, consider structural reforms for their economies. Dr. Akta, of course, that is your home turf, right, Asia? If you look at the structure of exports in Asia, we are very heavily dependent on exporting uh, to the advanced economies, in particular uh, United States and Europe. So if the demand, external demand is weak, we have difficulty. And in midst of the COVID, uh, most of the countries within Southeast Asia as a whole have been affected because of the lack of uh, cross-border movement and uh, trading. So we have a, a real issue. I can tell you the poorest of the poorest country, Bangladesh, which has 80% of its exports are ready-made garments, and they are produced for external markets exclusively abroad, uh, particularly Europe and United States. So its shipments have frozen. So not only are companies facing losses, it, the same is here in Pakistan. The textile industry is, is being hardly hit. Government is doing everything like giving head concessions, cash support, and all that. But unless we have opening of the transportation uh, and the shipments, we are not be going to be able to have uh, export. So now, world being so globally integrated, the key thing for us is to somehow find mechanisms where transportation of goods and services continues for Asia as a whole. But others suspect whether the global supply chain will totally change or will change to a certain extent. Uh, about the value chain, well, of course, there are two problems, I think. One is uh, a problem that we learned from the COVID-19 crisis is that uh, some goods must be maintained strategically inside the countries where you need them. For example, in, it in Italy, we discovered that we did not any, uh, any company producing uh, protective masks, and we were dependent on foreign countries to produce protective masks. And of course, uh, given that this is a global pandemic, every country was trying to keep the protective mask from the, for, for themselves. So uh, this is a very simple example, but a very likely value chain will be also uh, redesigned, taking into consideration uh, goods that strategically you, you must keep in your country or in, in nearby countries. Not only health, but also cybersecurity, mm. uh, telecommunication, things that strategically your country needs, which is uh, uh, even uh, very important too is that um, unfortunately in the last two years, and I don't see any major change in the near future, there has been a, a, a fight between the United States and China. Mm -hmm. uh, United States are very concerned about the emergence of China as a, 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 a peer and another, glo another global power. And they are doing whatever they want to reduce this. This means that uh, in, many, in many fields, we will see a separation of two groups of countries in the world, destroying de facto many value chains. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much this will be. Mm -hmm. uh, also because of, thanks God, some companies are producing in Asia because they needed to cater the local market, so they cannot retrench. I see. Uh, Dr. Akta, do you think uh, there's going to be some uh, minor adjustment or fundamental change in the global supply chain? This is an opportune time for all the countries to reflect on how they can integrate with the global value chains and how they can position themselves uh, to take the benefit of learning from the global value chains. Yeah. The key thing is that technology is playing a very important role. It's not about taking uh, 2,000 components and moving them in different parts. Mm. Today, you could do a lot of production through 3D printing and others sitting in your factory premises. So that gives a lot of opportunity uh, to other countries right. to also enjoy the competitive and comparative advantage. So I think that's critical, but also what they do need is very good trade rules. Uh, because of the WTO being in an impasse and because of the US-China trade war um, and the slowdown after the 2008 um, the crisis, we have had a slowdown 
uh, in trade, and there hasn't been a real uh, recovery of trade the type that uh, happened earlier. And Asia used to drive uh, the growth in, in trade, uh, but it has not matched its past performance. So okay. clearly, we need a combination of things to be discussed in the G20 or okay. the international cooperation is required to think through this. Mm. I want to thank both of you for joining us and bringing your insight for both the global trade and also where you are, how it will come back to its feet and function again after this round of pandemic. Really appreciate it. Thank you.